Hello everyone and welcome to Craft and Noon To Go presented by Chatham Kent Public Library. My name is Amy and I work at the Chatham branch. I hope to guide you along on our next adventure together. Our Craft and Noon videos will be posted on the third Monday of each month on Facebook and on YouTube. Kits will be available for registration uh, by contacting us at askckpl.ca. You can call by phone at 519 354 2940. You can email us at cklibrary at chatham kent.ca, by Facebook message at cklibrary, in person at your local branch, or register yourself online at search.cklibrary.ca. Carve out some time for us to craft together. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. And welcome back to Crafternoons to go. This week, or month I should say, we'll be making some seed bombs. These make for a great little gift for those friends, work companions, who you just never know what to get for them. It's a nice little introduction to spring and a great introduction to our seed library here at Chatham Kent Public Library. So let's get going and we'll show you what comes in your kit. Excellent, so your kit will contain three items. One is a little bag of soil. Two is a little brick of air drying clay. And three is a little packet of seeds that came from our Chatham Kent Seed Library. It's got a combination of marigolds, zinnias, and maybe if you're lucky, you get some sunflower seeds in there as well. So that's your kit for this month. All let's, right, so let's get started. We're going to start by unpacking our clay. So we've wrapped it in saran wrap for you. This clay is easy accessible at the dollar store. So if you're looking to make more of our craft afternoon, you're more than welcome to make a stop there fairly easy and expensive. What we're going to do is we're going to start manipulating the clay. And we're going to make it so it's a rough rectangle. If you have some rounded sides, that's not a problem at all. Bring this down here a little flatter, closer to the table. The goal with this is try not to get too many flat spots. If you happen to have a rolling pin, that might be helpful but I do find that the clay does need some manipulation. The other great thing about this clay, well, some might not think it's so great, but it does get your hands dirty. So if you don't care to get your hands dirty in this project, you're more than welcome to put on a pair of rubber, rubber gloves. If you happen to have some latex gloves, go for it. But overall, this is the shape to which we're looking for. Our next step, we're going to take our bag of dirt and I'm going to start to sprinkle some of the dirt onto the clay. So the goal here is that the clay will actually be a bit of a protective while the soil will allow for the seeds something to hold onto once they start to sprout. Now seed bombs, I've read, are great for your pots if you're receiving it as a gift. Um, it's just a matter of taking the one little seed bomb, planting it or planting it with two or three other ones and then you'll have a beautiful variety of seeds. These seeds can be a wildflower mix so if you do choose to do this again um, you're more than welcome to mix your flowers up. The goal is to have something more native to our areas. So there we go. So we have our soil spread out evenly along the top. Next, I'm going to take our packet of seeds. We're going to open these up, pour them into my hand here. So I get a good mixture. And we're just going to sprinkle it along the top of our dirt. So like I said, if you are um, a flower aficionado, you might recognize a lot of these seeds for being marigolds. 
I do have some zinnias in here, so it'll make for a nice little variety, a nice punch of color, and nothing really after a long winter is more exciting than seeing the sprouts of your plants start to come up. I have so, to try not to breathe too hard so my seeds fly away. But, so, we've got our seeds laid out there, nice, fairly evenly. Our next goal is to actually start to make almost like a cinnamon roll where you're going to start rolling the clay. I'm doing it away from myself. You can do it towards yourself with all the beautiful yumminess on the inside uh, for your cinnamon roll of seeds and dirt and clay. The ultimate goal is that we're going to be mushing all this together anyways. So you might have some fallout which is fine because as we manipulate the clay you'll notice that we'll be able to pick some of that back up again so we're just going to do a quick pinch just to seal that end off as best as we can and now as if we're playing in the dirt that's not quite ready because it's still quite frozen our ground we're going to start manipulating and squishing our clay this allows for that dirt to get interspersed with the dirt and the seeds as evenly as we can. Yes, you might have some spots that break. Feel free, do some rolling over. Yes, you'll have some dirt exposed. We are all good. So just like kids playing with Play-Doh, keep on manipulating that clay as best as you can. This is basically the mixing process. tell here I have lost some of my dirt and my seeds in this process if you find your clay is a little on the dry side feel free just to moisten your hands with a little bit of a paper towel too much water the clay will start to fall apart on you don't want that but continue to moisten your hands until you feel that it's malleable easier to maneuver squish this back together again and this might take you five or six minutes or so but it's a great way to feel as if you're becoming back in tune with nature again with the dirt between your fingers looking pretty good for me here. I'm actually going to start making my clay into the shape of a sausage and I'm going to start to roll it back and forth. You'll start to see I'm picking up some of that extra that was on the table. That's also something that's very helpful and didn't mention it earlier. You might want to keep something on hand to protect your table. Just continue to manipulate until everything comes together for you. Rolling it back and forth. We're gonna look for a shape that's, well, of course they always say like a snake. Um, about the thickness of your fingers. So everybody's might be a little bit different in the sense that everybody's hands are different. But so this there we go. Next step here is to you can take a butter knife. I I was just gonna just pinch off a little bit and start to make your seed balls, bombs, balls, little ones rolling between your hands. And there we go. And continue. If you want to do it evenly, if you want an even number, of course you're gonna do your halves. Halves. Half. Half your halves. Get your quarters. And if you feel that they're still a little bit big, you can even half your quarters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You could possibly get up to 16. I prefer this size here in order to manipulate. So these are a little bit on the bigger side, but remember when we were laying things up, 
we may have captured some air. So as we reform these into balls, your next step would be to let them dry. I've let mine dry here, so you can see the color difference. A little bit of a size difference too from my original one. Um, that one is completely dry. I let it sit for a weekend. That's because I left on Friday and back on Monday. Probably about 24 hours, your seed ball would probably be most dry anyways. So if you're thinking of do, uh, giving these as a gift and want to prepare yourself, definitely make them ahead of time. That'll give you enough opportunity to dry them out. The worst of the worst is if they don't dry out properly, uh, the moisture on the inside of the seed ball could cause some mold or mildew to build up. So that's why it's important to dry these out. That way too, it'll infect your seeds and they won't actually be able to germinate as we'd like them. These ones are now dry. You can see that the colors change quite a bit. They're not as dark as the originals. You can see that the, some of the seeds are kind of trying to poke themselves out. That's okay too. You might have a, a seed or two left over. That's fine. Um, because of course, those seeds, once they get into the soil and watered, the clay that you're sitting in will actually start to decompose and produce a nice foundation for your seeds to take hold in. So. Your next step would be either keep them for the, yourselves and plant them, or you can actually make up a little gift bag with three or four inside, or a nice piece of lace with a ribbon, a little tag to let the gift receiver know what these are and how to take care of them. Um, and then from there, they're good to gift. So I hope you enjoy this craft, literally took about 10 minutes to put together, maybe 15 minutes to do the actual creating, 24 hours to 48 hours to dry out the seed balls, and gift giving. Just takes an extra 10 minutes to put it together and off it goes. Great little Easter gifts as well. Enjoy the spring season. We look forward to seeing you later for our next crafter news. So I made a bit of a teaser earlier in my program where I said you can pick up seeds from Chatham Camp Public Library. So as of today, which is March 21st, 2022, Chatham Kent Public Library Grows Seed Library is now open. That means you can check out seeds from any Chatham Kent Public Library branch starting today. Make sure you bring your library card with you because every card allows for checkout. We will be hosting a virtual program with Julie Demikos, who is known as the Gardening Girl. She will be doing a live virtual presentation on Saturday, April 9th at 3 p.m. Thank you everyone for How joining us for Crafter Means To Go. Time to sign off. We'll see you next month. Bye now.